Hey, I'm Abby and welcome back to the Life Work Balance YouTube channel. In my last video, I gave you eight tips on how you can have a successful first week in a remote or hybrid job. This week, I want to give you some tips on how you can have a successful first week at an in-person job. Now, while the tips are similar, they are slightly different. So before I jump into that, if you're looking forward to hearing the tips to have a successful first week in your in-person job, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell so that you can receive life work balance advice delivered directly to you every Sunday. So regardless of if you are in an in-person job or a remote or hybrid job, it is really important that you conduct some prep work before you actually start your first week. The prep work is really important because it sets the foundation for what you should expect for your upcoming week. Review your job description or the posting that you applied to to refresh your memory on the different roles, responsibilities, maybe key tasks or projects that you will be expected to work on. Granted, you may not be exposed to everything that was listed in the job posting during your first week, but it's a good refresher on what you could expect. I also recommend reviewing your interview notes from your single or multiple interviews that you had to get this position. If you took notes during your interview, reviewing these notes will be helpful. Again, it's more of that refresher, just reminding yourself what to expect, maybe reminding yourself of some of the people's names that were in the interviews with you. You also want to do some prep work on the logistics about getting to and from your new workspace. What sorts of traffic can you expect? If you are driving with all of the commuters into a specific area of town, do you need to give yourself an additional 15, 30 minutes, or even an hour of time to get from your home to your new place of work? What does parking look like? Is there going to be on-site parking for you? Or are you going to need to find street parking or some other paid parking? If you are not driving in, but you are taking public transportation, what does that look like? What is the standard timing for that? Will you need to make transfers? Will you be using multiple modes of transportation, like a light rail or train and a bus? So do some research and prep work to understand what the logistics will look like to actually get to your workspace. You also may need to know if there's security or not. Maybe, if you're like me and you've worked in government organizations, maybe there is security that you will be required to go through because it is a courthouse. And courthouses on Mondays tend to be more busy than courthouses on Fridays. So if you're starting an in-person job at an organization where there might be security, there may be more security on your first day than on the last day of the week. So you may need to allocate some additional time to go through that security if that is what it would look like for your organization. So that's what you need to do before you actually start. Review all of those different documents, review your job posting or the job description, review your interview notes, review the logistics to get in. Now it is the day of. You have made it to the office, all the logistical planning went well, now what do you do? Well, because it is your first day, your goal for this week is to make a really good first impression. Now, I have a video all about making a really good first impression during an interview, and some of those tips apply to your in-person work as well. So if you haven't watched that already, I highly recommend doing so. I've linked to it in the description box below. So when it comes to making a good first impression, you want to make sure that you are getting people's names down. Now, I don't expect, and I'm sure the people you work with don't expect, that you understand all 30 plus people's names that you could potentially be working with. However, remembering people's faces and names and calling them by their names, even when it's your first week, is a great way to leave a lasting positive impression. So as you meet people, jot down their names, jot down some of the things that you remember about them, maybe what their job is, where they say they work, maybe even what they were wearing, so that you can remember, and when it's time to interact with them again, you can remember their name and call them by their name during this interaction. Along the same lines with introductions, I highly, highly recommend scheduling little meetings with the people that you'll be interacting with the most to get to know them a little bit better. They may be busy. They may have a busy calendar and a busy schedule. It's likely that you will have some downtime 
during your first week. So it is perfectly fine to schedule some meetings with the people, as long as they also have time, to get to know them. This is something that I did in one of my jobs. During my first week, I met everyone, I got to know their names, I got to know a little bit about what they were doing, and then I reached out to them individually and asked them if I could set up 15 to 30 minutes with them to just chat with them about what they like about working here. So they could maybe fill me in on what they actually do for the organization. If they have any tips or tricks for me to be successful while I'm working here. Maybe they know of a bathroom that I shouldn't go to and a drinking fountain that I should drink from. So there are different tips and tricks that people who have worked here for a long time can share with you. It's also a great way to start building that rapport. That rapport is really important to your overall success in this organization because the relationships that you build are likely the ones that you'll be able to rely on if things get tough. Whether you have a tough piece of feedback from your supervisor and you need to rely on that maybe friend group that you're starting to establish, or if you have a tough interaction with a customer and you need a little bit of support from your supervisor or someone who may have done your job in the past. So start to build that rapport with the people that you're working with. It all starts with knowing their names and it really has a nice kind of finish to getting to know them when you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with them to just to get to know them better. In addition to meeting people, remembering their names, and having those one-on-one -on -one meetings with them, it's also really important in order for you to make a good first impression to take notes on everything. Now I have mentioned this in the video that I just recently posted about what to do during your first week in your remote job, and I also talked about this in a video of the number one thing you should not do during the first week of your new job, which is to ask questions to things that you could easily find the answer to. So if you take copious notes, really thorough, well-detailed notes, you will be able to find the answer to many things yourself. So you wanna take notes on everything. Take notes on the people you're meeting. Take notes on where they work, what they do. Take notes on what you're being trained on. Take notes on the system, where documents are stored, what document naming conventions might be. Take notes on everything. That way, you can be relatively self-sufficient if you have any questions that do come up. As a reminder, when it comes to taking notes on everything, that doesn't mean that you set yourself up to where you should never ask any questions. You just don't wanna ask questions to things that you could easily find the answer to. So if you can take notes on everything, then you will likely have more resources to help yourself before you go asking questions to someone who is busy with their current day-to-day -day work and maybe even some of the work that you will eventually take on. My third tip is to use your downtime well. Now, in your first week, there are likely going to be times where you have downtime. Like I mentioned before, you can use that downtime to schedule meetings with people who you can get to know better. Also use that downtime to maybe get to know the facility better, the campus that you might be on. You can use your downtime to review policy and procedure documents training manuals, maybe even the manuals for some software that you might be using. There is likely time for you to explore the document management system that your organization uses. Use your downtime wisely. Do not, under any circumstances, just pull out your phone and start scrolling through social media when you have some downtime. You want to make sure that you're using your downtime in the most effective way and that you're going to give a good first impression by how you use that downtime. You don't just wanna show up and only do the things that have been scheduled for you to do. You want to be proactive and you want to demonstrate your self-sufficiency. Manage your downtime well. Do not just sit back in your chair, scroll through social media through your downtime. You want to use it in a way that will help you be most effective in this new job and will demonstrate to the people who have hired you that you are a good fit for this position. So my first tip was on what to do before you actually start your first week. My second and third tips were what you should kind of do throughout your first week. And my fourth tip is something that you should do at the very end of your first week. And this is to bring treats and say thank you to the people who have made your first week go really smoothly. I highly recommend going about it some way like this, bringing in a bunch of treats for the people that you work with, so maybe a box of donuts, or something like that, and then send out an email to the whole department saying, 
I just wanted to thank everyone for helping me feel so comfortable throughout my first week. As a way to show my gratitude and my appreciation for being here, I brought some donuts. You can find them in the break room. I hope everyone enjoys their Friday. Not only is that a good way to actually demonstrate your gratitude for the people that you are now working with, but it's also a great way to have them remember who you are. So I highly recommend that you do these four things during the first week of your new job. Congratulations on getting through the interview and the job search process and getting this new job. I hope your first week goes smoothly. And if you have any ideas, thoughts, or things that have worked well for you in the past during your first week, please comment below so anyone who is about to go into their first week can also learn from your experience. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell so that you can receive life work balance advice delivered directly to you every Sunday. Thanks, and I'll see you next week.